What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. Now as a beginner, you will come across loads of videos that tell you what fish you shouldn't get, but they don't often make suggestions for alternatives. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna tell you eight fish that you should avoid, and I'm gonna suggest alternatives to all of those that are a much better bet, either because they're smaller, less aggressive, or more compatible with corals. Now, if this is your first time here, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right. Let's get to the list. First up is the Flame Angelfish. Now this is an absolutely stunning fish and one I'm sure you've thought of getting yourself. As a dwarf angel, it doesn't need a huge tank and depending on who you ask, there's up to about a 50% chance they won't eat your corals. But the reality is that the chances of them eating some of your corals in the medium to long term is probably higher than 50%. And speaking from experience, the second one of your fish starts munching on your corals, you want it out of your tank immediately. Now the obvious alternative is the Coral Beauty, which is by reputation the most reef safe of the dwarf angels but part of the charm with the flame angel is the flash of red you don't often see in the hobby so my alternative is the flame hawkfish it's just as vibrant looking as the flame angel it has bags of character and it's great for small tanks as little as 30 gallons they are a potential risk to shrimp but except for tiny ones like sexy shrimp the risk is fairly low Number seven on my list of fish you'll regret buying is the six line wrasse. These guys are really common and are probably on nine out of 10 shortlists for new reef keepers. But a quick Google will reveal endless stories of serious aggression that will put almost everyone off. And the alternative I'm going to suggest is the Naoko wrasse, which is currently circling at the top of the screen and is the fish I get asked about most in my tank. It's a fairy wrasse, which means it's completely reef safe and it looks fantastic with a red, yellow and white body and black fins that it shows off before dive bombing whatever is swimming around at the bottom of the tank. The dive bombing isn't a serious act of aggression though and it's very unlikely to do any harm to any of your other fish. I just think it likes to show off every now and then. Up next is a schooling fish, the green chromis. There's something undeniably awesome about seeing a group of fish swimming in a close school. And as a relatively small and cheap fish, the chromis is often first on the list of candidates to fulfill that category. But as with other schooling fish like Anthias, they don't form a particularly tight shoal when settled in a tank, and they have a strict hierarchy that usually results in them fighting to the point of killing each other off one by one until there are only one or two left and I can't really recommend an alternative in terms of schooling fish. The closest thing to a tight schooling fish that isn't aggressive is the red spot cardinal fish, but they don't tend to live long in captivity and often come with an expert only tag. So the alternative I'm going to suggest is the sunburst or fathead anthias. It's not a classic schooling fish and most people will keep just a single specimen, but it ticks the box of being an anthias and is an absolutely beautiful fish. Just make sure you can feed it a few times a day with an auto feeder. Number five on my list of fish you'll regret buying and great alternatives is the dotty back. These are some of the brightest fish in the hobby and really draw the eye of the new reef keeper. But they're also generally pretty feisty and will end up bullying whatever fish gets within two feet of them, which if I'm honest can be pretty stressful and upsetting to watch. But fortunately there is an easy and obvious replacement here in the Royal Grammar. They're far less aggressive than dotty packs and only slightly less vibrant. They're also great for nano tanks and your kids will love them thanks to the character Gurgle from Finding Nemo. Next up is a fish that is so beautiful that I have very little chance of persuading you not to try one, the copper banded butterfly fish. It's common knowledge that these guys are very difficult to keep and are extremely fussy eaters. If the specimen you look at in your local fish shop isn't eating enthusiastically, just walk away as it is likely to be doomed. And even if it does compete for food, the chances are it'll still wither and die in a couple of months, even if you have Aptasia anemones in your tank for it to eat. I wouldn't mind betting that over 90% of copper bands imported die within six months of leaving the ocean. But the good news is that the pyramid butterfly is an ideal alternative. They're reportedly one of the most reef safe butterfly fish available and they can be kept in groups. They don't have the looks of the copper band, but they still have that beautiful butterfly fish shape and they're also peaceful and easy to keep. If these guys can persuade enough people not to get a copper band, then this video has done its job. First on the podium of fish you'll regret and great alternatives is the blue tang or dory if you really must. Its scientific name is Paracantharus hepatus and if you ever see Acantharus in a fish's scientific name, beware that they will need a very big tank indeed. Now I don't want to get all tang police on this one, I have seen a blue tang kept successfully in a red sea reef for 250 in the short term, but these guys do get aggressive and will grow very large regardless of what size tank they're in. So unless you have a 6 foot plus tank, you should completely cross this guy off your list. 
The good news though is that there are loads of alternatives. If you absolutely have to have a Tang, any of the Zebrasoma family are a better bet, and that includes the likes of the yellow and purple Tang. And for smaller tanks of around 70 gallons or more, the Tomini Tang and Yellow Eye Coli Tang are also great choices. Moving away from tangs, the One Spot Fox Face is a great algae muncher that can also be kept in tanks of 70 gallons or more. And if you just want a bluefish, the red-headed Solon Rass is your guy. He's peaceful, reef safe and one of the few nice bluefish available in the hobby. The runner up here is a real biggie, damsels. These guys are often recommended as a good beginner fish because they're so hardy and sadly some fish shops will recommend them as a great fish to keep while your tank is cycling because they're more tolerant of ammonia. But ammonia is toxic to living animals and keeping fish while you have ammonia present in your tank will mean that they are burning up and surviving by the skin of their teeth. They're also generally very aggressive and will fight off anything they see regardless of size, all of which makes them a terrible beginner fish in my opinion. And the alternative I'm going to suggest is any wrasse from the genus Halicores. One of the benefits of damsels is that they eat pests like flatworms and nudibranchs, but so do Halicores wrasses like the yellow wrasse, silver belly wrasse and earmuff wrasse. And these guys are also peaceful for the most part, reef safe with the exception of very small inverts like sexy shrimp, and importantly they are really active. To my eye, having bright, free-swimming fish that are always on display is important for your viewing pleasure, and there are few better fish for that than a wrasse, or ideally several wrasse. And number one on my list of fish you'll regret buying and great alternatives is the Emperor Angelfish. It's common to see golf ball sized emperors in fish shops, but they'll end up the size of a dinner plate, and as with most angelfish, they're candidates to munch on corals, particularly LPS and soft corals. While the Emperor takes the headline here, this really applies to almost any angelfish. Unless you're prepared to risk your corals, they're not a great addition to your reef tank and can make light work of those expensive acans you've just bought. But I can't deny that angelfish are simply stunning and the good news is that the alternative is a group of reef safe angelfish called Genacanthus angels. It's easy to tell the difference between males and females so you can keep a pair in a big enough tank and there are some stunning examples like the Bellis angelfish with blue, black and silver stripes or the Japanese masked swallowtail angel, a fish I've been trying to get hold of for over a year now. None of these guys are suitable for small tanks, but seeing angelfish in a reef tank is a sight for sore eyes, and with genacanthus angels, you can achieve that without risking your prize corals. So there you have it then, they are the 8 fish I think you should avoid as a beginner and 8 great alternatives. Now this video is only intended as a brief overview rather than a detailed guide on each fish, so make sure you do your research before you buy, and do remember of course that fish don't read books so not all specimens will behave the same way. If you enjoyed the video then give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing.